It's the spring of 2012. Chin Ya Mei and her grandmother are preparing lunch for the family. Chin works as a tour guide at the Eastern Qing tombs, moved here to become tomb keepers. Chin believes that these tombs, which they've been guarding for generations, hold numerous secrets. Located at the foot of Mount Changre in Zunhua, Hebei province, the Eastern Qing tombs are the largest imperial mausoleum complex from the Qing dynasty which spanned the 17th to early 20th century. Covering an area of over 2,000 square kilometers, they are the biggest and most complete mausoleum structures in existence today. At the center of the structures lies Shaoling, the tomb of 17th century emperor Shunzhi. The four major tombs are those of emperors Kangxi, Qianlong, Xianfeng, and Tongzhi. The complex also contains three tombs for Empress consorts, including that of Empress Dowager Tzu Xi and Tzu An, five tombs for imperial concubines, and two for princesses. In total, 14 Empress consorts and 136 imperial concubines of the Qing dynasty were buried here. The mausoleum is encircled by a tall red wall. For 247 years after 1663, around 217 palaces and memorial archways were erected, with more than 360 additional structures along Mount Changrei. Their elegance and grandeur have given them both high artistic and historical value. The once heavily guarded mausoleum complex is now open to the public. Chin's daily routine begins in front of the tomb named Zhao Shi Ling. Zhao Xi Ling is the first independent mausoleum to have been built for an empress consort of the Qing Empire. It faces south, and its structure was used as the model for the tombs of later empresses. The tomb's occupant, Xiao Zhuang, was a concubine of the first emperor of the Qing dynasty, Huang Taiji, and was also the mother of Emperor Shun Zhe. She assisted his son, Shun Zhe, and then her grandson, Kang Shi, in ruling the country. She is a respected figure in the history of the Qing dynasty. In 1687, Xiao Zhuang passed away at the age of 75. According to Manchu custom, she was supposed to be buried in the Zhao Ling tomb, Huang Taiji's mausoleum in Shenyang. However, she was neither buried there nor in the Eastern Qing Cemetery. Puzzlingly, she was buried outside the Red Wall. There are around 20 villages within the Imperial Cemetery. The villagers are all descendants of past tomb keepers. The story of Zhao Shi Ling has been passed down among them. <laughs> Rumor has it that after the death of Huang Taiji, 
Xiao Duang married regent Dorgon. She was thus deemed to be too shameful to be buried with her ex-husband, Huang Taiji. As a punishment, she was buried outside the wall of the imperial cemetery. Poems by Tsang Shui is a collection of poems written by Zhang Huangyan under the style name Tsang Shui. He was a loyal supporter of the Ming dynasty. In one of his verses, entitled The Court Life of the Barbarians, he wrote, Wine vessels for a wedding ceremony are amid hustle and bustle in the palace of benevolent peace. The ritual minister has arranged the great rites for the wedding of the Empress Dowager. The poem was written around 1650. It describes the wedding of an Empress Dowager. According to the Qing archives, there were two Empress Dowagers at this time. One was Empress Dowager Xiao Duan, who was nearly 50 years old at that time. The other was Xiao Zhuang, the mother of Emperor Shun Zhe. She would have been about 30 years old back then. Thus, it seems that the Empress Dowager referred to in the poem was probably Xiao Zhuang. But is this poetic record reliable? Xiao Zhuang's given name was Bumu Butai. Her father was a bailey of the Cochin Mongols. In February 1625, the then 13 year old Bumu Butai was married to Huang Taiji. In 1636, when Huang Taiji became emperor, she was given the title Consort Zhuang. On September the 21st, 1643, Huang Taiji passed away without leaving a will appointing an heir to the throne. This resulted in a fierce struggle for succession. The Qing dynasty had still not fully defeated the Ming army in northeastern China. The war was still raging on and the power of the Qing dynasty had yet to be fully consolidated. Having lived in this whirlpool of power for years, Xiao Zhuang had gained great political insight. She could see an opportunity to bring her son to the throne. On October the 8th, 1643, Supported by Dorgon, her six-year-old son, Fu Lin, ascended the throne and became Emperor Shun Zhe. It would have been impossible for Fu Lin to ascend the throne without help from his mother. Following the death of Huang Taiji, Xiao Tuang assessed the situation. Using her great political insight, she was able to persuade Dorgon, a very influential regent, to support her young son. How did she manage to do it? She will use her own woman's wisdom, her tactics, right? Her special woman's wisdom, her tactics, and her gentleness. She will protect her and Dorgon's relationship very well. Because she knows that in this royal palace, who is the most powerful in the royal palace? So she uses this kind of way to protect Dorgon, to protect him, 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 保护自己的这个呃这个侄子，也就是自己的儿子孙志皇帝的皇位，来做他的这个卫道士，保护他的皇权，那么达到了自己的政治目的。那么对于多尔衮来讲呢？
他也对于小皇帝呀、啊、顺治皇帝呀、啊，对于他的控制也就更加有利了。所以说，两个人各得其所。Chao Zhuang formed an alliance with Dogon to help her son gain the throne. Their close relationship had long been the subject of much speculation and suspicion. However, in the eyes of historians, the account presented in Zhang's poem is nothing more than rumor or the retelling of a folk tale. Jian Yi Gong's poem, that song, I don't think is enough to prove it. Because at that time, the writer was a Fan Qing famous poet. 嗯，实际上后来呢，就是多次参加这个反，就是这个反清的这些这些这个斗争吧。后来呢，还被满族人给抓起来，后来杀害了。Anti-Qing scholars had written many articles disparaging the Qing court. The court life of the barbarians can hardly serve as reliable evidence, and accounts of the marriage between Xiao Zhuang and Dogon are nowhere to be found among known historical documents. 实际上呢，太后是不是真的下嫁小叔子多尔衮，我们在这个正史里面没有发现一个有力的证据证明太后皇太后下嫁给多尔衮。It seems to be nothing but groundless speculation. So is the rumor that she was buried outside the walls as a punishment. In fact, judging from her posthumous title. She was still very much viewed as Huang Taiji's empress consort. This Xiao Zhuang Wen Huang Hao is his successor. This Wen Wen is actually the Huang Taiji's temple. Because Huang Taiji is called Tai Feng Wen Huang. He is called Xiao Zhuang Wen Huang Wen Huang Hao. This means that he is the Qing Tai Feng Huang Taiji's Huang Hao. This Huang Taiji is the Da Qing Huang Di. 给确定的，就说明呢，世世代代的大清皇帝都承认他是皇太极的皇后，而不是多尔衮的王妃。那通过这名称，也完全不证明了他有资格葬入皇太极陵园之内。The theory that she was buried outside the Eastern Qing tombs as a punishment for marrying Dogon didn't seem likely. There had to be some other reason. There's another saying amongst the villagers regarding Xiao Tuang's burial location. There is historical evidence showing that Xiao Zhuang acted as the gatekeeper for her descendants. In Annals of Mount Changrei, there are accounts about Xiao Zhuang's burial place. On her deathbed, Xiao Zhuang told her grandson, Kang Shi, that she was deeply devoted to him and his father, and was therefore unwilling to be buried far away from them. She is reported to have said that she would have no regrets if she was buried near Xiaoling, the tomb of her son, Shun Zhu. It was her own wish not to be buried with Huang Taiji. In her will, she expressed her desire to be buried near her son in the Eastern Qing tombs. But she ended up being buried outside the mausoleum complex. So why didn't Kang Shi fulfill his grandmother's wishes? 
In February 1661, after the death of Shun Zhu, her eight-year-old grandson ascended the throne and became Emperor Kangxi. From that moment on, Xiao Duang took it upon herself to raise and nurture her grandson. Under the reign of Kangxi, the Qing dynasty embarked on a new era of rapid development. Xiao中活着的时候,他对他的孝敬表现得生活的方方面面 in 1687, Xiao Duang became critically ill. Although Emperor Kangxi looked after her day and night, her condition didn't improve. Kangxi became gripped by anxiety. He led the princes, dukes and ministers to the Temple of Heaven, where they all prayed for his grandmother's longevity. Kangxi even said he was willing to give some of his own lifespan to her. But this wasn't much help to Xiao Duang. On December the 25th, 1687, Xiao Duang passed away at the age of 75. According to her will, she wanted to be buried in the Eastern Qing tombs, but Kangxi didn't follow her instructions. So, but Kangxi didn't build a mausoleum for Xiao Duang within the Eastern Qing tombs. Instead, he had her coffin laid to rest outside the red wall that surrounded the mausoleum complex. Why did he make this decision? A closer examination of the mausoleum layout may expose the dilemma Kang Shi was facing. When Xiao Duang died, Xiao Ling, the tomb of her son, Emperor Shun Zhu, had already been completed. It's located along the axis of the whole mausoleum complex. The tombs of four emperors who would succeed him lie on either side. It follows the traditional concept of placing the most senior and most distinguished person in the center. Placing Xiao Duang in this complex would surely go against this tradition. So there was no ideal burial place for her anywhere in the mausoleum complex. The layout of the Eastern Qing tombs had already been fixed. Not a single spot could signify a more prominent position than Xiao Ling. So, where could Kang Shi find a worthy position to bury his grandmother? Xiao Zhuang's request to be buried near her son posed difficult issues for Kang Shi. For months, he was unable to find an ideal location. Finally, he decided to construct a hall to the east of the Great Red Gate, outside of the wall, to place her coffin while they were still deciding where to put it permanently. Kangxi had five halls of her grandmother's former palace dismantled and reconstructed as the temporary resting hall at the Eastern Qing tombs. Because 
，是吧？就满足这种心愿，实际上他都认为自己的祖母还没有死一样，才住在他生前的店里边，暂时把他安放在这儿。On April the seventh, sixteen eighty-eight, Tang Shi personally escorted Xiao Zhuang's coffin to the temporary resting hall. It remained there for the next thirty-seven years. Kang Shi never built a mausoleum for her during his lifetime. You know, we know that people are born to be happy. But Xiao Zhuang, his body has never been born to be happy. So, Kang Shi Huang is willing to do this? Yes, he is very, very not willing to do this. So, he wants to be born to be happy to be born to be happy. He wants to be born to be happy. 但是啊，他自己无法处理，那就是陵寝的位置，啊，他确定不了，啊，他不忍心啊，这个把自己祖母葬在这儿，但是呢，又不忍心违背祖母的遗嘱。Following the death of Kang Shi in 1723, his fourth son ascended the throne and became Emperor Yongzheng. The following year, it was suggested that a mausoleum should be constructed for Empress Dowager Xiao Duang. Yongzheng listened to his advisors and decided to convert the temporary resting hall into her permanent mausoleum. Yongzheng 皇帝找了一个呃冠冕堂皇的理由，那就是天意，就是说孝庄文皇后啊，在天之灵一定极为安妥，不然的话，为什么我的父皇在位六十一年呢？前啊，前无古人，啊，多子多妻多福又长寿，国泰民安，进入了康啊康熙盛世，啊，一定是在天之灵极为安妥，保佑我父皇啊，保佑我父皇有这样一个大好的形式，所以呀、啊，这个地方是一块宝地，因此就地改建为陵。A couple of months later, the construction of the mausoleum had been completed. On December the tenth, seventeen twenty-four. Xiao Zhuang's coffin was finally buried in the underground palace. 那么雍正皇帝也非常的聪明，他给这个孝庄的这个陵寝的名字呢，就定名叫什么呢？昭西陵。孝庄皇太后，她呢是皇太极的皇后。那么呢，皇太极的陵叫昭陵。从方位上和空间上来讲，这座陵寝呢在昭陵的西侧，所以叫昭西陵。虽然跟沈阳相隔很远，但是呢，跟皇太极的昭陵同属一个体系的，也就是说是皇太极。这个的，他西侧的一个，他的皇后陵，他的一个陪葬墓，所以定名叫昭西陵。All this meant that the mausoleum outside the wall was no longer alone. It had links with her husband's tomb, Zhao Ling, in Shenyang. It stands apart from those interred in the Eastern Qing tombs. In an indirect yet ingenious way, her wish of being buried near her descendants was fulfilled. At the same time, the traditions of the Qing dynasty were not violated. She was buried as required in a place that highlighted her prominent status as the Empress Consort. 那么这个红墙呢，就相当于一个分界线一样。红墙里面埋葬的是入关以后的这些帝后妃、皇子，呃，他们的这个这些人，他们陵寝是建在里边。那么孝庄皇后呢，是属于皇太极的皇后啊，她是入关以前的，所以呢，也也就把它分割开来了。Xiao Zhuang is believed to have played an important role in the consolidation of the early authority of the Qing dynasty. To show respect to her, the annual ritual of worshipping the royal Qing family ancestors started from her mausoleum, Zhao Xiling. Three centuries have passed since her death, and the empire for which she gave everything has gone. Her spectacular mausoleum and the folk tales about her have become the best legacy of her extraordinary life. In the next part, we explore the greatest work of the Qing dynasty in its prime, the dark, secluded underground palace the exquisite stone carvings, the bizarre layout, and other secrets of the mausoleum. Join us for part two of Flashback to the Qing Dynasty.